Aizan, who, when fighting as Izanrate, won the silver medal in the super heavyweight division at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, defeating along the way David Tua of New Zealand. Later, Tua knocked out Izanrate in his only previous appearance here on HBO's Boxing After Dark. Two inch height advantage for Savarese. Five-inch weight advantage for him. The two fighters are even in reach at 80 inches apiece. Rules of the bout with the incomparable Harold Letterman. The Lou Savarese David Eisen fight will be 10 rounds, non-title, under the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. It's totally different from our first fight. The standing eight count is in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the tenth and final round. Jim. All right, Harold. And now first to enter will be David Izon, as I mentioned earlier. It's been a lot of... Alton Merkerson, the same man whom you've seen in Roy Jones's corner. He's a part of that whole square ring thing down there in Pensacola. Got a wife and a brand new baby, and he hopes to keep them here in the United States, ultimately to become a citizen here, as he already is in Ghana and Nigeria. Well, David Eisen mentioned it yesterday, the fact he doesn't like those big cities. He prefers to stay in places like Pensacola. of the East Village in New York. He's the vegetarian heavyweight. Likes to snack at the 24-hour sushi bar near his downtown apartment. The only loss to split decision to Foreman earlier this year. He and his manager trainer Tommy Gallagher totally convinced that he won that fight. And you see 12 first-round KOs for Savarese among his 36 wins. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Promotions, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, this buzz for you, presents world-class boxing, 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The three judges assigned at ringside to score this bout on a 10-point bus system will be Joe Dwyer. Larry Hazard Jr. and Melvina Lathan. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Arthur Mercanti Jr. And now, for the millions watching around the world, and everyone here at the world famous Apollo Theater of Harlem, New York, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, in the blue corner, wearing green with white trim and weighing 225 pounds. His professional record, 19 victories, 17 by knockout with only two losses. A native of Nigeria, now living and fighting out of Paris, France. Introducing David Izon. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing blue trimmed with red and weighing 230 pounds. His professional record, 36 victories, 30 by knockout with only one defeat. He comes to us from Greenwood Lake, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Lou Savary. Tommy! You the chief second? 
Good evening, gentlemen. You received your rules early in the dress room by the New York State Athletic Commission. I expect you to obey these rules. Let's have a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Savarese told us about the Foreman fight and the bitter aftermath for him. Judge ready. You can't unscramble eggs. This is a chance for him to unscramble that egg. Two good, solid, well-schooled heavyweights. Izon lands two left hooks, the first two significant punches of the fight, and keeps going with the left hook. Izon hasn't thrown a jab yet, and Savary seems a little bit discomfited by that. Now Izon begins to work behind the jab. Well, the first thing you notice, Jim, is he hardly took a backward step against Foreman, and obviously he, he wants to do some more box, some boxing here. Izon mentioned to me yesterday the fact that uh, when he fought Tua, David Tua, he, he warmed up about five rounds, and he kind of burned himself out just prior to the fight. This time, he looks pretty, uh, doesn't look like he's warmed up at he's all totally here. dry, yeah, he he's looks totally the way dry. Sullivan did at the beginning of the last fight, even drier because at least Sullivan was sweating around the legs. Izon hasn't broken a sweat at all. But then, for that matter, Savarese looks pretty dry, too. And Savarese is slow on his feet here as round one develops, and Izon is whipping him with left hooks. Not hard left hooks. They're just landing. They're not doing damage, but he's putting leather on Savarese's face for the first minute and a half of the fight. Observers tell us that both fighters did indeed spend a fair amount of time warming up. Maybe it's just chilly in those dressing rooms. Right hand across the top for Izon. Savarese not getting much going here in round one. Savarese felt that uh, against George Foreman, he didn't use his left jab as much as he should have. And he said this time he pretty much utilized his left jab and keep this man off balance. Crowd will occasionally chant Lou, and it sounds like boo. So it's not that they're displeased with the action. They're just trying to help get Savarees going. Hard left hook lands for Izon. Savarees manages to land a little counter punch inside. But Izon comes back with a three punch combination and it's called beating your man to the punch. Stop stiff on him now, Louis. Referee Arthur McCanty Jr. urging Savarees not to hold his left jab out and try to measure the man with it. Now Savarees fires a combination to the body and begins to get off the mark as round one comes to a close. Put you on your left. Put you on your left. Put you on your left. Look around. You're a little busy. That right hand a little bit, Louie. You're waiting. You all right? Thank you, sir. That's good. That's all right. Come on. You can see all that shit coming. You see that shit coming, but you got to fire back. Now, let's go. You all right? Just keep them hands up. Don't go to the bottom and come back out here and get him. Here's eyes on. He doesn't seem to throw everything behind his punches, Ray. They're quick little punches. What they are, um, Larry, arm punches, no leverage. There's Jerry Cooney watching at ringside here, just a few rows removed from the ropes here at okay. the Apollo Theater. Once you fit it, once you fit it, God damn. Kind of poetic to see Jerry Cooney here watching fellow New Yorker Lou Savarese okay. plotting his progress in the heavyweight division. And you notice fighters who have very little amateur experience they don't throw their punches correctly. Okay, but both of these guys have pretty good amateur experience, Ray. I mean, Eisen won a silver medal. Uh, Savarese was a two-time Golden Gloves champion. Um, it's just it's bad habits with these guys here. He's never corrected. 
Because I noticed when Luis Evaristo throws a punch, left hook, it's kind of an open glove punch. He doesn't pronate. Now Savarys reverses positions with Izon on the ropes and hammers him with the right hand. Prior to that, Izon had been throwing power punches over the top and landing just as he did in round number one. Savarys turned those punches over <laughs> just a second ago. When you say pronating, what do you mean exactly? Just turn the knuckles over it. So a lot of times guys left with the left hook. Yeah, it's when you pronate the punch and turn it over that it has real power. And the snap. Savarese is starting to try to make his power felt against David Izon. Right hand lands through Izon's guard. And Izon slows down and stops throwing punches when Savarese is able to put them together in combination. When Savarese has Izon gets, gets to go, what he should be doing, throw a punch to the body. Because a lot of times, guys have those hard hits, but a surprising shot to the body, take their toll in the fight. Hard right hand to the body by Izon. Savarese counters with the right across the top. And the left-right combination, good right hand uppercut by Savarees. Alton Markerson, Izon's trainer, said Savarees has a terrific uppercut, and we don't want to see it if we can avoid it. Step back. in now he's leaving his chin wide open as he attempts to get closer to Savarese. What Savarese should be doing is throwing some uppercuts. Two ways to look at David Izon's chin. It was good enough to allow him to survive a lot of heavy artillery for a long time against David Tua. But on the other hand, it wasn't quite good enough for him to finish the fight. You see there, again, Izon comes in and he... Uh, He's in perfect position for an uppercut. Savarese's is most effective punch so far. Hard right uppercut. He tries another one just as the round comes to a close. But that one was a much more tentative shot inside. Don't give me your head first. Keep your hands in front of you. When you're moving to the target, I want you punching. Then your body trailing you, okay? following you up, okay? I don't want you sticking your head out. That's why I come with my short round shots to the inside. Stay behind your jab. When you touch him with a jab, step up with the right hand, then the hook. You're leaning. You got an overhang on the front, okay? And when you, look, when you punch him, spin around on the left side and come with the left up. Okay. Okay. Okay, now when he's, he's breathing hard. He's throwing everything he got trying to, trying to get out of the round, okay? Relax and, and start letting the punches fly. Let's go. Let's to and straighten with the right hand. This it's fucking thing is right on the thing. It's going to be bleeding, but don't worry about it. It's fine. It's a little nick. There ain't nothing to be long about. All right? Yeah. Get the right hand going. The Tommy Gallagher corner is always R-rated at best. And you saw the unusual placement of that little cut on Savarese's face right between the eyes on his forehead. Savarese threw 79 punches by CompuBox count in round number two. He averaged 78 punches around in his battle with George Foreman. That cut where Savarese is just above his, well, actually starting to bleed now, but it's not in a very dangerous spot. Well, the blood's going to trickle down his nose. Yes, So not it's, it's going to be bothersome for him, but it's not going to affect his vision. It's not too big of a cut to be a problem. All right, keep it clean now. Keep it clean. What time Brooks told Izon in the corner not to come in unless he has his hands up? And that's a mistake he's been making. He's coming with his, with his chin up. Izon trying to work hard to Savarese's body. There's a five-punch Izon combination before Savarese finally fires back with the right hand. Good st stiff left jab by Izon, snapping Savarese's head back. Savarese is able to get in a little left hook as Izon comes forward. 
But Izon continues to hold the tune in round three with snappy combinations. Izon is trying to turn this into a fight, a blow. And I don't think that at least that we should be there. That was a mistake he made against George Foreman and a mistake he's hard to make now. Left hook lands inside for Savarese. He was loading up the right hand to fire it when Izon came into his chest. Good uppercut by Izon and a hard right hand behind him. Okay. cage by Savarese. Izon with a right to the body of his own. They trade punches again, and Izon just misses with a wide-ranging left hook. Can you stop? Come on, baby, let's go. Oh. Yeah, I know. I know, it's fluid. Straight right hand. Three. Slacky kicks. You understand? Turn to your right, give me a left uppercut to the body, and keep going around. Don't punch and stay right on his left shoulder. Keep turning. Double your hook up. Take deep breath. Deep breath. Try working your jab more. Quit looking for the big shots. Shoot the big shots when you know you can touch it. You're hurting him to the body, son. But when you when you hit him, bring home the fucking bacon, huh? Right in his face. Come on, baby. You may have heard Savarez say to his trainer, "He's getting tired." I had a sense of the same thing for the middle of the last round, but it could be deceiving. Meaning they think Izon is getting tough. Yes. Stop holding the break. Step back. stages of his bout with David Tua lost on a 12th round technical knockout but he was certainly in the fight through the first 10 rounds that was December 21 of 1996 he's only had one round of boxing since then a one round knockout against Harry Daniels What's your head, a month and a half ago in Tallahassee these guys are landing some big punches here Jim yep the stiff punches Izon, it seems, is beginning to reach a little bit with his punches. Yes, Larry. I was just noticing that Arthur McKenney Jr. is jumping in and breaking up these clinches real fast. And that's why this fight is moving along at a brisker pace than the first fight. It's good referee. Certainly there's more clean punching in this one. Cut for Savarese, left hook up top for David Izon. I think for Savarese to really do some damage to Izon, he has to put these three, four punches together. And he's got the skills to do it if he can find the right openings. A double left hand and right hand is a perfect combination. On temporarily losing his balance there. Savarese landed a right cross. Stop stiff on now, Louis. Canty Jr. telling Lou Savarese not to hold his man out there on the end of his left hand. You notice the left hand of Izon is starting to drop here. 
It's a perfect opportunity to throw right hand. Uppercut lands again for Savarys. Nassim Hamed making his first appearance on HBO December 19 here in New York against New Yorker Kevin Kelly. Great fight on that card. Junior Jones and Kennedy McKinney, two fighters who've known each other a long time. Okay. Obvious. Let's go. Tom you we're out. Come on. Right hand, left hook, hold them. Originally, Savarese was supposed to fight Shannon Briggs, but then when George Foreman decided he didn't want to fight Rockman, Briggs moved in for Rockman, and Rockman moved in against Sullivan. Some of the chess moves of the game. And Izon moved into this fight with a chance to make a name for himself against Savarese. Izon appears to be a more, a certainly a better school and tougher opponent than Briggs would be as far as the Briggs we know from before. All right, Harold, four rounds, how do you see it? Larry, let me tell you something. I think that Lou Savarese, if he would take a step forward, would make this fight a heck of a lot easier than he's got it so far. I got it all even. Two rounds apiece, 38 to 38. Judges look so much for effective aggressiveness. And David Eisen is carrying this fight to Lou Savarese, and that's why I thought David won rounds one and three. Lou, hit, Lou hits you a lot harder, hits you with the real cleaner shots, but the problem is he backs up an awful lot. If he keeps going forward, he'd win this fight easily. What's your take on that, Ray? I agree with um, Harold. I think if, um, whoa, that was an incredible combination by David Eisen. By Eisen. And the right hand, and Savarese goes right on to his trunks. Three. And he is hurt. He, he's trying to, Six. he won't, Seven. he can't make it. Eight. The wrong way to go in this round. Step back. It's only a 10 round fight. Minute 24 to go in round five, as you see. Savory's holding on. Savory's doing the right thing. He should tie him back up. He has no legs under him, and David Izon is like a madman here. Yeah, well, let's see if Izon has the skills to finish a man. And he's got him in trouble as Savory's hit. Right hand shot landed cleanly for Izon. Savory's isn't going to make it out of this round if he keeps taking punches like that. But Lou comes back with a right hand of his own, and that temporarily stalls Izon. Now another left hook lands flush. Savarese needs to hold on. He's trying to fight back. A candy a candy looks almost like stopped it. Yeah, he was about to he stop it. Right. His best bet right now is to go down to one knee and clear his head. He's trying to fight back. He's a tough hombre. He might make it out of here. And we'll see what happens between rounds. Savarese landed a right over the top. Yeah, that's it. Down through the ropes. That's it. That's it. be the end of it. David Izon with a spectacular fifth round KO of Lou Savarese. just allowed the man to hit him with too many clean shots. Unbelievable performance by David Eisen. Stay it, baby. Well, he did what Foreman couldn't do. Put Savarese to sleep. Tremendous barrage of power punches in the fifth round. The way he'd been winging that 
left hook on target since the beginning of the fight. He wondered if he would ever actually stun Savarese with it. Savarese had taken a lot of them before that time. Aizan caught him high on the head, it appeared to me, Ray, close to the temple. I believe that's what, that's what was, that was the case, Jim. Um, David Aizan was throwing some big punches, but I didn't think he was really hurting Lou Savarese. You know, what, we have to, what we have to do to put this in perspective is against the big, powerful, slow George Foreman, Savarese was able to look as good as he did. Against a smaller, quicker man, he was just the, the bigger, slower guy. Great call, Larry. Well said. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. Right hand shot. It was a very powerful looping right hand, which caught him on the, I think on the, the left ear. Yeah. Just a big punch, big looping right hand. Right cross, looping left hook, and then that right hand right there, and Lou Savarese came apart in pieces at that moment. Again, this is a clean punch on the chin, and David Eisen just stayed on top of his man, took advantage of the opportunity, and once again, big right hand. And now here is what prompted referee Arthur McCanty Jr. to stop the bout, and quite correctly so, as Izon is able to put Savarese through the ropes with the continued barrage of power punches. I mean, here Savarese is trying to fight back, but in doing so, he left himself wide open for another incredible right hand by David Izon. Well, he got himself into a free-swinging brawl and paid the price as he couldn't handle the power shots of David Izon in this fifth round. Gutty effort by Savarese to try to make it out of the round, but he took an awful lot of punishment en route to the final climax in favor of Izon. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this KO. Michael! Ladies and gentlemen, the referee calls a halt to the bout at 2 minutes 44 seconds of round number 5. The winner by knockout victory, David is on. Well, Larry Merchant said it before the fight at 32 years old. Lou Savarese needed to begin embarking on the bigger part of his boxing success right here and now. And so the consequences for Savarese are grave as the result of Izon's stunning fifth round KO victory. Total punches you see there. Savarese was throwing more. Izon was landing at a much higher rate. And a lot of what Izon landed were power shots through those first four rounds plus, and that ultimately made the difference as Savarese let himself get clocked with power shots one too many times. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner. Thank you, guys. C congratulations, Thank you very much. David. He's on the day. I, I, had to, I had to say it because by the time I learned how to say it, you were David Izon. <laughs> David Izon. Izon. Izon, that's, that's the short form of my name. <laughs> All right, tell us why you were able to dominate Savarese. What happened? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank everybody who made this possible for me because I just want to prove myself that I'm a good heavyweight. I won the silver in the Olympics, and by, by right, I'm supposed to wear a crown. Is this the biggest moment of your life then as a professional? Is, this is the stepping stone of my career. This is the beginning of my career. I'm going to perform very well in future. Were you just too quick for him? Yeah. yeah uh, at the gym, I worked with uh, Coach Mackerson, and uh, we worked on speed. Did speed. he hurt you at all? Yeah, he did. He has a good punch. He's a good puncher. He has some punch in his hands. I mean, he's heavy. He's a good boxer. Alton Mackerson, what do you see uh, next for David? Well, I think we're going to go back to the gym and uh, work on a few more things. He's improved quite a bit since uh, he had his last fight against Tua, 
He performed well today against Savarese. I think we need to learn how to work to the body and then come to the head more. But he's, a, he's going to be up there with the top. You know, I consider the next two or three fights, I, I know we'll be right there for the for the world title. I, I was supposed to go on his body. I left all the body, and he was telling me to go to the body, body, body. I was head hunting, and which is not very good. I need to work on the body again. But you did, even if you had hunted, you did hunt the head down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I did because uh, I think I, I'm, I'm improving in my, in my boxing uh, career. Uh, I think uh, I'll perform better in future. All right, thank you very, very much. David, again, congratulations. I, I just want to tell, uh, I'm coming home, <laughs> Laurence. I'm going to meet you home, okay? All right, that's his wife and his uh, new child down there in Pensacola. Uh, Lou, was he just too quick for you or quicker than you expected? I got caught, you know, as part of, as part of the game. Call me a good right hand. What are you gonna do? He said, but early on he was he w he seemed to befuddle you a little with his quickness. Were you just surprised by that? Yeah, it was a little bit quicker than what I thought he was gonna be. He said you did hurt him. Did you feel that you were hurting him? We, yeah, I we, we, him right hand. Oh, I hurt him with a few right hands, but he's a tough guy. He stood in there. Uh, and you mentioned uh, between rounds after the third round that you thought he was he was starting to wear down. Were you ready at that point? to come on to him stronger, or were you just planning on boxing and boxing until the later rounds? Yeah, get him into the later rounds and then try and take him out. But he got, you know, he got caught, that's part of the game. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the knockdown, uh, Lou, the first knockdown. Tell us uh, uh, what you see. He was caught, I mean, he got caught, that's part of the game. Part of the game. I mean, hit quite right here. You're a bigger, stronger guy than him. Why did you want to stay away from him? Well, I mean, we're trying to box a little and use our, you know, use our, because we're a taller guy, use our, you know, our hand speed and keep him and then get him in the later rounds where we thought we could take him out. So, what do you think it's part of the game? It's a little early to be looking down the road, but what does this do for your career? It's, it suddenly is, it certainly is a shock because a win here tonight might have you know, put you on the short list of some pretty good Same fighters. Thing. What are you going to do? We got to, you know, you just, what can you do? You keep going. That's it. We'll go forward. It's one setback. We got one loss. We can come right back. The heavyweight division, one win, you could be right back on top. Thank you very much, Thank Lou. You. Jim?